October 24, 2022. Abcast 365, episode 365. Let's go. Of course, I have a few things to share with you guys. An evening of reflection. Shall we? Employees shot to death in Dallas hospital ID'd gunman threatened girlfriend. Cops say it was just earlier this month in another Texas hospital that an 18 year old was present for the birth of his child, went off the rails and started strangling babies. Now the question is, how do we move forward with security without banning fathers from being present during childbirth? or banning loved ones who just want to be there to support their friends or their family members. Patient case manager Jacqueline Pakua walked late on Saturday morning into a room at Methodist Dallas Medical Center on a routine matter. Nestor Hernandez, the father of a newborn in the room, stood and shot the 45-year-old woman dead, police said. Nurse Kitty Flowers, 63, heard the shot and looked into the room from the door, Hernandez fired into the hall, killing her too, police said. A hospital police sergeant, Robert Rangel, was a few doors down on a stolen property call and took cover. As Hernandez reloaded his gun and began to leave the room, Rangel shot him in the leg, police said. Hats off to that officer for not freezing up and doing what needed to be done. Even with the best training, Nobody's expecting an active shooter situation to break out around a bunch of babies. That, and being that the guy reloaded his weapon, there's no telling how many more people he was preparing to shoot. Hernandez is a parolee who had received permission to be at the Dallas hospital for the birth of his child. Hernandez was convicted in a Dallas County aggravated robbery and sentenced to eight years in prison. He was released on October 20th 2021 after serving six years of the term the texas board of pardons and paroles placed hernandez on parole with a special condition of electronic monitoring via a device on his ankle he was arrested twice this year on parole violations right off the bat with two parole violations he was never supposed to be on the streets in the first place You don't give him a special anything. He showed you two times that he doesn't care about his freedom. In my opinion, this is a failure of our criminal justice system. Dallas Police Department Chief Eddie Garcia said at a press conference on Monday, a violent individual such as this should not have been on an ankle monitor and should have remained in custody. Absolutely. Methodist Health System Police Chief Glenn Fowler said at the press conference, that the hospital was not warned about Hernandez's criminal record or that he wore an ankle monitor. The hospital does not routinely inquire about the criminal backgrounds of parents visiting its mother baby units, he said. Fair enough. Then it's the whole vibe that if nothing else, you would like to give someone the benefit of the doubt that if not for a second, they would put the tough guy shit down just to be present for the birth of their child. No, he made a fool out of the whole legal system with that. Hernandez, 30, was arrested on suspicion of capital murder. He was stabilized and taken to another hospital. It was not clear whether he was still at a hospital on Monday. According to an arrest warrant affidavit reviewed by WFAA-TV, Hernandez was visiting his girlfriend and baby in a room in the labor and delivery department when his behavior became strange, just like the guy who went off the rails and just started attacking the nurses and strangling the babies. He made ominous phone calls and texts to his family, accused his girlfriend of cheating on him, and searched the room for another person, according to the affidavit. What, did the baby not have his eyes or his nose or something, or did he get some type of feeling that she might have stepped out on him? His jailbird ass? Hernandez hit his girlfriend in the head with a handgun that he pulled from his pants, according to the affidavit. His girlfriend told police that Hernandez said, we are both going to die today and whoever comes in this room is going to die with us, the affidavit states. Hernandez's girlfriend was treated for injuries and a newborn was not hurt in the incident, police said. Why do people always get mad and think that murder-suicide is going to fix their relationship problems? Hernandez was granted permission 
to be at the hospital with his significant other during delivery of the child, Texas Department of Criminal Justice spokeswoman Amanda Hernandez said the child was born Friday, according to the affidavit. The department's Office of Inspector General is working with Dallas police in this case, Amanda Hernandez said. On Monday, the Health System Police Department asked Dallas police to lead the investigation of the double homicide, Garcia said. Dallas police were already handling investigation of the officer involved shooting. Nestor Hernandez served a two-year prison sentence after he pleaded guilty in a 2011 armed robbery and a five-year sentence after he pleaded guilty in another armed robbery in 2015. According to state records, the victims were beaten and their property was stolen, the records state. We're not talking about a guy who just caught a couple charges. Violence is his default setting. Violence is his go-to move. He looks to hurt people right off the bat. No public memorial event for the victims have been announced on Monday. According to press reports from Africa, Pakoa was originally from Ghana. Hospital officials said they had increased security following the shooting but have not offered details. Next up, North Carolina Sheriff who disparaged black employees resigns. Oh, I'm here for it. And I love to see it. <laughs> How does it feel to throw your whole career away because you're stuck to an ideal that let the world pass you by? A suspended North Carolina sheriff has resigned in the aftermath of a leaked audio recording in which he called black employees by derogatory names and said they should be fired, his attorney announced Monday. Attorney Michael Mills made the announcement during a hearing on whether Jody Green, who was elected Columbus County Sheriff in 2018, should be removed from office, according to news outlets. I want to know what he said. Did he use the oldies but goodies, or did he come up with some fresh material? <laughs> if you're going to go out on your shield, the least you could do is come up with some brand new zingers. Give us something to remember you by before we remember you as the guy who checked our receipt on our way out of Walmart. Jody Green loves Columbus County and does not want to put the people he has served through this ordeal. Mills told senior resident Superior Court Judge Douglas Sasser. The announcement prompted applause from some in the courtroom. The News and Observer reported District Attorney John David had sought Green's removal alleging that he had engaged in racial profiling of employees, both personally and through those under his command, WECT-TV reported. The people who came up alongside of you that shared your worldviews, who still share your worldviews, where are they now that you got caught? Are they accepting any of your phone calls? Can you use their name as a reference? The recording of the phone call was given to WECT-TV, by a former sheriff's captain who's now running against Green to be sheriff. You play right into his hands. Located about 120 miles southeast of Raleigh, Columbus County has about 50,000 people and is approximately 63% white and 30% black. The 2019 call to then Captain Jason Souls came shortly after Green narrowly defeated former sheriff Lewis Hatcher, who is black. Souls was temporarily acting as sheriff at the time due to a court-mediated agreement that kept Green from assuming the duties of office while election officials examined the contest, which was ultimately decided by fewer than 40 votes. Peep game, because for a county that's 63% white to 30% black, for him to win only by a margin of less than 40 votes means people weren't too thrilled about him either. In the call, Green, who is white, thanks for clarifying, said he believed someone in the sheriff's office was leaking information to Hatcher. The station reported they didn't want you in the office. They knew you were a racist scumbag. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of these black expletives. We want to hope that he came up with something creative. <laughs> Green is recorded saying, I'm going to clean house and be done with it. And we'll start from there. Green was also recorded saying, every black that I know, you need to fire him to start with. He's a snake. Several black officers in leadership positions were later demoted or fired 
just following his directions right to the unemployment office because you think people are going to forget that you had a hand in helping him carry out this shit? Or will your excuse be, I was just doing as I was told? WECTTV reported that two black officers were on the previous sheriff's group of high-ranking officers known as command staff, but that a captain was fired and a lieutenant was demoted after Green was sworn in. He's making it very obvious. Another black sergeant said he was fired shortly after Green was elected. The station reported that several black deputies appeared to remain in the sheriff's office in positions below the level of command staff. This was so blatant and so apparent. What did he think? That nobody was going to notice that he was blackballing all the black deputies? Green issued a statement arguing that the recording of the 2019 phone call had been edited or altered. He's an idiot. <laughs> oh, I love it. But he didn't deny in the statement that he was on the call or that he made the statements. It's so bad. He couldn't even find a way to properly place his lie. Though Green had been suspended since October 4th, he had been campaigning for re-election. Sounds like someone we know, right? His name remains on the ballot in the November 8th election. But if Green wins next month, David said in a statement late Monday that his office would have an ethical obligation to file a new petition to remove Green based on the same allegations. Next up. Shopper arrested for not scanning every item at Walmart self-checkout and stealing $1,000 of items. My bad, I might have missed a few items. I'm not properly trained to use this thing because I don't work here. <laughs> it's tempting. You got us working on the honor system. A Michigan woman is being charged with theft after allegedly stealing from Walmart by not scanning items at the self-checkout. What are you going to do? Write her up? <laughs> Dock her pay? <laughs> and swapping out barcodes for cheaper items. <laughs> so you mean to tell me that Snickers was really a 70-inch flat screen TV? Michigan State Police say 34-year-old Teddy Joe Marie Teddy Joe Marie Fleum was using the self-checkout at the Walmart in Alpena County when employees noticed she wasn't scanning each item she was putting in her basket. Walmart's loss prevention employees confronted, and they walk around in plain clothes too, it's hilarious, confronted Fleum after seeing what she was doing. According to reports, Fleum then became agitated and left the store. Loss prevention is walking around in plain clothes. You don't know who's who. This guy was checking my receipt. He looked like he was about to give me a hard time. Then the lady across from him said, don't worry, it's not you. It's him. I just want to make sure he's doing a good job. I'm his boss. She looked like she just stepped out to go do a little bit of shopping. The Walmart store in Alpena County reviewed their CCTV footage and discovered that Liam had previously stolen more than $1,000 or 885 euros worth of items. Fleum was soon arrested by Michigan State Police at her home in Alpena County and was later charged with first-degree retail fraud. Fun show. Fun show. Fun show. That being said, I'm going to wrap this one up, but I'll be sure to talk to you guys very, very soon. Adios.